Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today I have a wonderful video where I get to interview John from Huntington Builds. So John is the inventor and the creator of the magnetic plates that I reviewed a couple weeks ago. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it above and link it below. You can check that out. But I found these plates really, really amazing, super easy to use, and just a wonderful upgrade to my Onefinity and to other CNC's that have this type of dust boot. So um, I reached out to John, he agreed to do the interview and we had a great conversation. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut over to the video. We're gonna talk with John. I'm gonna pepper him with a couple questions and then we will wrap this video up. All right, let's get on with it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into the questions here. We have John from Huntington Builds. I wanna thank you, John, first for doing this, for jumping in and kind of uh, indulging me in my request to uh, do this interview. <laughs> Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a big fan of your YouTube video. All right. Video, sorry. Yeah, no worries. It's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, it does take a tremendous amount of energy and time to like, put these videos together. And it always kind of frustrate, frustrates me whenever I uh, I do a video, which I think is really, I, I'm really impressed with, and then no one watches it. So <laughs> it's yeah. all okay. So my last video uh, was about the magnetic quick plates that I purchased from you and I, I got from your Etsy site. And yeah. I found them. They're super amazing. I love them. Uh, I have destroyed, I cannot tell you how many of the, the actual original plates. I had one of those dust shoes with my uh, Shape Oco, my X-Carve, and, and the Onefinity, and I swear I have destroyed every single one of them <laughs> kind of across the bat. So when I saw them, I think I saw it, um, I want to say I saw it on the forums. It might have been on on Instagram, it's hard to say, but I, 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 I literally, I, I saw it, I clicked on the link, I bought it right then and there. Um, and so they came, I unboxed it, they're amazing. Uh, just, uh, so, you know, the original shoe kind of worked okay, uh, mm -hmm. as I covered, I mean, I had the, the unfortunateness of, of destroying many of them, but you know, what inspired you to kind of take a uh, level this up and take it to the next notch and, and really make something that, that, that goes over, you know, over and above what the original manufacturer kind of put together. Um, well, I guess I always have a, like a love of like improving and fixing things. Like I've had a 3d printer for a while and I've always enjoyed like doing like little upgrades and tune ups. And when I was, Using the uh, dust boot, I also destroyed several acrylic plates, and I noticed that um, depending on the size bit you're using in relationship to the hole, right. it made a big difference in how well it worked. Right. So, but also I realized like it's a pain to unbolt it, and like if you're going to use like a flattening bit and then like a bowl bit and then a uh, like an engraving bit, like these are three drastically different size bits, and it takes a long time to switch that the plate out each time. So I thought like, what's the faster way we could do this? and magnets. And so I just started playing around with it. And I actually modeled, I like I modeled it up in Fusion and then I 3D printed out some prototypes and like a refined design. And then I went to the uh, polycarbonate because I wanted something that could, you know, take a impact or two. <laughs> like I think I've got one over here. One of my original prototypes, like I've run into it a bunch of times but it hasn't shattered and it like keeps on, you know, trucking. Yeah, I, I will certainly tell you that uh, I've hit mine, as, you, as I've said, and and they do, they just kind of just explode. <laughs> I mean, yeah. pieces go everywhere. In fact, I, I I hit it one time, didn't know I had hit it, and it, you know, the vacuum was running, and it, all the pieces, I just took the dust shoe off, and there was nothing on the bottom, like it was <laughs> completely gone. There was just the three screws that were, yeah. that was empty, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. what, what happened? And that was kind of my introduction to maybe the, it's probably cast acrylic would be my guess is not maybe the best solution. I don't know. But um, yeah, the, when I, when I, when I got your package and I unpacked it, I was like, the, this stuff is a, it's way thicker than, than the original. So I, I like that. I didn't know it was, uh, it was uh, the high impact stuff until now, but uh, that's awesome. Uh, so uh, I mentioned when I got it and I unpacked it and in, in, in the video, I mentioned a little bit about the branding and some other things that uh, about the way that you packaged it. And I'm just interested in the, the kind of attention to detail you had, not only on the packaging, but on the construction itself. Uh, I mean, uh, that, that's something that really fascinates me as a maker and someone who like kind of builds and ships things to people. Um, is that uh, something you normally do? Is that the uh, something you're kind of, again, leveled up your game a little bit for this, or is this just uh, um I don't know, just talk a little bit about the way that you went about this. 
Um, well, for the, I guess, for the packaging, I kind of, I listened to a podcast, AWP, I don't know if you know, it's like a woodwork podcast. And one of the guys, his name is, uh, uh, his Instagram is Petrie's uh, Workshop. And he always talks about like, uh, you know, he wants you to enjoy it. So when I have the package, you know, people are giving me money for a product, but I want them to be excited and enjoy it when they receive it. And, you know, just have that excitement when they see it. I don't want to just come like in a, you know, in a envelope that doesn't generate some sort of excitement. And then for like the design process, like I taught myself SolidWorks a long time ago and now I use Fusion 360, but I worked for a guy and it was always about like refining the design and making it simpler right. and like getting something that just like works well without being overcomplicated. So I think yeah. this, I think that kind of answers the question about like the actual design itself. Yeah, no, it does. And, and you know, like I said, the, the I, I was truly impressed, not only with the packaging and the kind of simplicity of it, um, the, the kind of fine touch that you, you had with the, the sticker on the outside. I was really impressed with that. I don't know why. Um, but the, the, you know, as someone who also taught myself fusion and, and kind of as an engineer by trade, uh, I have a tendency to, I want to say, a combination of over engineer things, but never stop engineering things. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so getting to a kind of a 1.0 for me is always a bit of a challenge. And then there's never ever two 2.0 because there's always one point something in between. Right. Yes. And so I, I always, uh, I love talking to other people just kind of resonates with it. And, and I, unfortunately I, I live with another engineer. And so uh, <laughs> it, it's a little bit of a problem for us when we're doing house projects, because we're always trying to one up each other, but <laughs> we, 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 we kind of work well together in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, it's not. nice when you have that balance of somebody who thinks the same way. You right. Know, well, so we're both that. linear thinkers, but we, we have different, we come from different design spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. and so I think that, um, and I talk about this at my regular day job as well, about that kind of entropy of thought, um, or someone, you got to have someone who doesn't think the same way as you to bring that randomness to it. Right. And so it's always yeah. good to collaborate with people on things. Right. Uh, and and I, I always find that inspiring to me anyway. And so this is one of the reasons why I reached out to you and thought, hey, maybe we could do a video about this and really talk about what inspired you. And then as you're yeah. I'm sure you, I mean, you're on the forums, you're reading, you know, the, the messages, you're also watching the YouTube videos or whatever. And you see something that's like, hey, maybe I can do that better. Or, hey, that's like, I never thought of it that way. Right. Like the magnetic plate, just I'll just be honest. I mean, it's it's the simplicity is epic in my mind. And I never thought of it. Like, and, so, and I was like, after I saw it, I'm like, magnets yes of course like why not <laughs> so anyway <laughs> but i mean that was part of the inspiration like you talked about the forums like that's one thing i love about like the onefinity and you know they have the awesome forums on like both facebook and there and like when i was going through i was seeing all these plates that were shattered i'm like there's got to be a better way we could do this you know to simplify and make everybody's life easier because i mean we're all makers we all enjoy doing this and i don't know that was like so it was part of the inspiration to right. come here. Yeah. And I have to imagine, I mean, it's only going to be a matter of time for most people who are just getting into uh, the CNC hobby. And I don't know about you, this is my third, <laughs> which is, I, I don't know if I should admit that or not, but I've said it before. So okay, that's okay. yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I might, I, I can't say I have a problem because for every new one, I, I get rid of the old one. I don't have them laying around. Um, and that's kind of the barrier to entry for the significant other as well. Yeah. Right. Um, I can't collect too much stuff, but um, I, I got a lot of water under the CNC bridge. And if I had had some of the resources that are available today, back when I started, I feel like I would have been a ton more successful. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I, I got my original shape Oko within two or three hours. I had broken the only bit that I had. <laughs> And then I was like, well, what do I do? Right. Uh, I made two or three successful carves and then I, I then I didn't write it, it. That's the way it worked. And then at the time there was no there was no easel. There was no carbide create. There was actually no Fusion 360. Um, and that's kind of how I started getting into some of these. And, and I'm incredibly um, frugal as well. I, I really don't like spending money on things. And so what attracted me to fusion is it was essentially AutoCAD for free. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I, I can't rave enough about fusion, although Autodesk is kind of whittling away at the, the features of it, but that's neither, neither here nor there. Um, all right. So back to, back to kind of the questions uh, we talked a little bit about the packaging and the quality of the materials and the kind of construction. Um, and so uh, I guess, if, is there anything you want to add? Cause we didn't really touch on this, but kind of like your, your philosophy or your wisdom, on how you go about starting a new design and and I mean do you kind of have the end product in mind or is it more of an iterative process where you're designing on the fly um because I, I like me I kind of do both depending on the situation sometimes I have something in mind and I just go off and I, I put it in the system and I, I do what I need to do and then sometimes I, I 
I don't. And I might start with pen and paper. I might not. I'm just curious in how maybe you approach this problem or other problems you've done in the past. Um, I think the way I approach it is I kind of get like an idea in my head and I'll like, like play around with it a little bit, like hold it and stuff like that. And then I'll just kind of go into fusion and I'll start drawing things out and like, oh, well, you know, that idea of the way I wanted to have it fit into there isn't going to work because I want to get like a plastic really thick or, you know, these amount of magnets aren't going to work. So, I mean, I, that's why I use like the 3D printer because I probably, if I was as experienced as you are, um, I probably could have done it on here even faster, but like that's, was like my medium that I kind of knew and I'm used to. And so I kind of use that to like play around with different fits. And then I like graduated on to this. Yeah. Um, so, I'll, I'll be honest. Have a concept. And then, you know, sometimes like um, <clears throat> I'm working, on, I've had several people who bought the plates be like, Hey, can you make, uh, an attachment for like your dust boot holder that'll hold the plates as well so like yeah. i was this weekend i like did three different designs and like they just totally <laughs> did not work like i 3d printed them out tried to snap them on like broke so i mean it's just like a process you know you got to keep going and and like just take steps and just keep whittling away at the problem like um like for instance when i made this guy right here like it would have been this is the dust boot holder or whatever i had a hard time getting this fit right but instead of just like reprinting the whole thing you know and spending like i don't know i think they take like six hours for each one to print i just like did like a thin cross section of this right. section right. to get like the fit just right and then i moved on to the next problem of like the wings so you know you take one problem at a time get it to where you like and you move on to the next problem and sometimes we have to do for the next problem we'll make you go you know a couple steps back but you just take it one step at a time and just kind of keep moving forward with it yeah, so you know, it's funny you mention that because I, I made a bunch of uh, dust adapters uh, for my four-inch dust collection out in the garage to my various uh, power tools. Same thing, right? It, I started off by just printing the entire thing. I would take it out there and it'd be off by half a millimeter, be too loose or too tight, right? And and then I kind of had the same epiphany of maybe I only need to print like the first millimeter, see if it fits, right? And then I can print the entire thing. Um, yeah. But you mentioned the kind of the design process and, and it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, I, what I realized is, and I, I do the same thing you do, is a lot of times I'll 3D print things first because uh, to have that that physical sort of, uh, you can feel it and see it. And then if you can see and see it, generally the material, materials are going to be more strong and more durable over time. Yeah. Um, but what I realized when I'm designing, I did this uh, when I designed my faceplate for my CNC, right? That's a very cool faceplate, yeah. by the way. Thanks. Um, yes. I, no concept of, of size. Right. I, I don't know why when I in my brain, when I said, I'll just use, you know, M3 screws like that seems like a good size. Right. Not realizing mm -hmm. that they they're really small. <laughs> yeah. And so when you get it's a 12, uh, what I had is a lot of 12 millimeter M3 screws. And I'm like, wow, they're really hard to like get down into the box and kind of get attached and whatnot. Um, and so when I did use the M4 and the M5 screws, I'm like, well, maybe that's the way to go in the future. Although when you're designing it and, and it's eighth inch, I use H eighth inch uh, HD. PE so an mm -hmm. M3 screw is perfect fit uh but and I didn't certainly want to jump up to a quarter inch because that's significantly more expensive but uh it's just something it's it, it, something you you mentioned is right you just have to learn it as you go and you get familiar with things and now I'm trying mentally I'm trying to make the leap I'm trying to get away from using imperial completely and just use metric because it's just so much more easy to do when you're designing uh but all the time i'm like so what's a quarter inch fit again <laughs> yeah it's funny you you mentioned that because i was just thinking about when you're talking about like i'll be sitting there like sometimes my wife will like you know sit down on the couch i'll work on playing in fusion and i'll have like my calipers in my hand and i'll be like yes so it's so only <laughs> no is that no that's too small that's too small let me just you know you kind of like They're play with the calipers and yeah. see like oh that's about right they're, they're never far from me because the same yeah. thing is I'll, I'll pull a screw out and like, how big is that really? Like I, I got, I have, and that's the little bit of the issue, like in the United States, right? Not growing up in the metric system when someone says it's a liter and I'm like, I don't know what that means really. Like that's a quart, four quarts, three quarts, a gallon, like what yeah. is that, right? Um, or millimeters, whatever. And so I'm, I'm trying to reprogram my brain. Uh, I, one of the guys that's I watch. Though. Yeah, one of the guys I watch on YouTube is uh, Jason Bentz. I don't know if you watch Bentz Woodworking or not, um, but he does everything in millimeters. And he talks about it in the millimeters in, for furniture size. And I'm like, what the hell is 1,200 millimeters? I mean, I, how big of a desk is that, <laughs> right? It uh, takes a while. It does. Well, well, and it's tough, too, because, like, some of the resources, like, I've been trying to go more metric and stuff, too. But then, like, you go to the Amana speed charts right. and, like, everything's still in inches. I'm just like, well... I got to go back and see if the metric equivalent makes sense. And it's just, 
a lot of converting, but. Yeah, uh, so when we were designing the, the CNC Explorer application and we downloaded the Amata database, uh, they had uh, about 10 or 15% of the, the end mills were in millimeters, uh, but they still had surface feet per minute <laughs> as, as a field. And so we, yeah. I was having this discussion with Ed, who's the other guy who developed it with me about, is it really surface feet per minute? Is that value actually surface meters per minute, <laughs> right? Or, or not? Because like, is it a typo or is it actually? Yeah, well, yeah, because the field name, right, was from the structure of the, the end mill, not because they actually had a, a, another field called units and the unit was mm -hmm. meters, but the name of the field was surface feet per minute. And I was like, yeah. I don't know. And, and at the end of the day, it turns out that we have very few people who use metric um, end mills for that app. So it was not a big deal, but nevertheless. All right. Uh, we're, we kind of went down that little rabbit hole, but I thought that was a good <laughs> conversation. Um, so I, Definitely. yeah, I think one or two more questions here. Um, let's see. We kind of covered this, but maybe we want to dig some more in it. Um, uh, no, we didn't actually cover this. All right. So for me, thank you so much. You included that dust shoe holder, <laughs> right? Uh, I, I wasn't expecting that. And I was actually, when I pulled it out, I think you'll you see in the video, I thought it was a GoPro holder because the little square <laughs> thing, right? And I'm like, well, I don't have a GoPro, but this is gonna be kind of cool, right? Um, and then I went on to your, on, on the Etsy site and I saw it there and I'm like, this thing is great. I put it on immediately uh, and I, I slid the thing in and like, this was really great. So, you know, kind of pivoting, what inspired you for that product? Was that more of a functionality utility thing? Because um, certainly, like I said, when I, when I got the, the dust, uh, the, the plates for me, that was just pure functionality, right? Uh, I just, I recognize the need and I'm like, I'm totally in on that. Um, but this thing as well, I mean, I see it there on your CNC in the background, right? Uh, I, I'm terrible at organizing and having, <laughs> like having a place to put stuff like that is, I think gonna just, again, up my game a little bit. So what inspired you to make that as well? Is a similar- That story? was, yeah, that was actually the uh, first thing I designed. I actually designed, the first one I designed was uh, to go on, Peter or Rowdy Roman's uh, dust balloon. And by the way, he's been like super supportive. Like I've sent him almost everything I've launched. And he's given me feedback and stuff like that. So he's been awesome at like supporting me getting started. So I just want to shout that out. But anyway, so I made it first to, for that. And I actually have, I think I sold like one of the digital files. I had a bunch of people ask me for them and then like nobody bought them. Right. But then I realized like, you know, not everybody may have his boom or may take it off sometime, but everybody when it's got the motor on top. So then I redesigned it for that. And I think this is like one of the things that I get more feedback from people who are like, Oh my God, I did not realize I needed that until I had it because yes. it just turned out like this thing was, you know, oops, I took it off the side. Thing. You broke it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when I, when I put it on and I was like, yes, it, it was one of those things that never occurred to me that I would need, but I'm like, oh dear Lord, this is going to be. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Because this just was always like in my way. I'm like, I want to make something for this. And so I just, you know, came up with this guy right here. It's yeah. easier to do when you're actually standard with machine. It does, yeah. But yeah, just to slide in there and get it out of the way. Yeah, and so I, because the way I was going to get uh, Roddy Roman's dust boom as well, but the my, where the hose comes up from the desk is quite far away, not dissimilar to yours set up there. Um, but I was a little afraid that it might break off. And I do have a 3 d printed part that I designed myself here. And um, I, I've cracked it. I, I, I blew one of them out completely and I cracked one already. Uh, but that's because I'm an idiot and I pulled on the hose. But <laughs> um, broke that thing off like three times that's why i bought the uh files instead of the unit itself yeah exactly so i was i was thinking about doing that but i was just thinking that by putting the hose up and kind of locking it into place because it's to your point is always getting in the way i'm running over it i'm crashing into it um and i don't have my uh, router cable tied to it necessarily it's kind of a little bit loose uh mm -hmm. but i definitely see that I think there's some utility there uh but but i was thinking uh so when, again in the unboxing video you um, I was like, well, the first thing I need to do is probably find some place to store these extra plates so I don't lose them because I will. Um, and so for right now, my solution is when I just stick them all, mag I magnet them all to each other and just stick them in the dust boot so I know that they're not going to go anywhere. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if there were some slots on the side here and you just pop them in and then it's all right there and you can swap them in and out. Because um, I'll be honest with you, with the original design, right, um, I don't, I, I changed the plate twice. Uh, the, I changed it the first time because I destroyed it. Uh, and the second time, because the hole was so big, everything was flying out of it. Yeah. Right? Um, and so it, it, it's so utterly inconvenient to, to take it off and those little screws and, and whatever. So anyway, 
Uh, well, it works, in my opinion, it works so much better when you have like, the, I mean, I know some people are not like the biggest fans of it, but like when you have the right size plate on that, it works really well, yeah. in my opinion. Well, and I see, so I, I do like the new dust shoes that come out the back. I think that might be interesting, but the people that I, the number of people I see running without dust collection uh, just mystify me. A, you know, you're recutting all those chips, which is bad for your, for your bit. Uh, for me, I'm in this office in an enclosed space whether you see it or not, there's a ton of particulates that are flying in the air. So I like yeah. having that. And I've actually vented my shop vac out the wall to the other room. Uh, so if there is anything that gets through the bag and the heat and everything, it extracts everything. So it's actually better uh, for me. And I do have that little cyclone thing in the bottom there, but um, uh, nevertheless. All right. So on to the next question, uh, which is kind of a, uh, this is not a stump to chump moment, but I'm curious. <laughs> Uh, do you have any other products coming down the pipe that are in the line or maybe something that's in your brain other than maybe those little slots in the side of the thing there? Uh, or is this, uh, you kind of innovate as you go along? Uh, I mean, I've got a few ideas. Uh, there is a, another maker, I'm sure people could guess what it is, who I've been talking to with on Instagram and I have some files and I'm doing some 3D printing for another series of uh, dust boot plates uh, for his line. Um, and yeah, I've got just like a few other ideas, uh, but I'm kind of, I'm getting, I have like, yeah, I've got a few ideas, but I want to get this like really dialed in and, you know, build upon it to where it is. Like you're talking about how, you know, possibly doing something for holding the plates up here. Um, you know, I've, I've got several ideas <laughs> in a limited amount of time, unfortunately. So this is kind of like the main focus, but there is more stuff coming. Yeah, I'll leave it there. I, I was thinking, um, I'm going to put a little bug in your ear. So the little face, the face plate on the router there, it has those four little screws. You can attach to anything you want. If you have a laser, uh, you know, that obviously that space is taken up. But I was like, hey, just a flat pay, a plate with two little slots to slide the extra two things in. That might work um, for me. And so, That's actually a good idea, yeah, yeah I, I, I was... Uh, I, I, I don't know if you watched the last video with the laser thing. I, I, I was going to go down the, the, the one finity laser road and it just, um, the logistics here in the office, just, it wasn't going to work. And, mm -hmm. uh, and again, like I mentioned, I'm a little frugal and it was quite expensive and <laughs> uh, I didn't want to really spend that much money for something I wasn't quite so sure about. Um, although the significant other was adamant that we needed one of these. So, um, uh, I'll, I'll let her figure it out with her, with her cricket and, and whatnot upstairs. But, um, so last question, uh, open-ended question. We can take it wherever wherever you want. Um, any advice for CNC users, Onefinity users, new CNC users, uh, not just about dust collection, but any advice you might want to give in terms of the hobby, things that maybe uh, hard knocks you learned that people can avoid or, you know, whatever, wherever you want to take it. I mean, I guess the uh, first advice is like, don't, it's going to seem overwhelming at first, but like, after you start, it's not so bad. And there's always gonna be more you can learn. Um, do your research, watch several videos. Like don't just watch like one video on this topic. Like that's why I love like some of your videos when I was starting out, it's like you explain it like very simply and step by step. And I watched other videos and they like brought in things and you had things they didn't have. And so I kind of just took it one step at a time. Um, and then this probably seems like self-evident, but like watch your CNC when it starts going. There's too many times where I've been like, oh, I got this. It's good. It's good. And I'll start it and, you know, I'll be going fine. Then I'll walk away and then I'll come back out. And that's how I've lost two dust boots is because they like, one time I had this hose too short and nothing against Peter's. I had the hose too short and I was surfacing the wasteboard again and I got over this far corner and it like pulled it off the top. I mean, so stay with it and kind of watch it at least till you know what you're doing. I'm not saying if you're doing like a 36 hour cut, you gotta watch, but you know, when you're getting to the extensive perimeters, um, and then just don't be afraid to try new things. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to ruin things. And I guess along those lines, like if it's something critical, you have one of like do a test, test pieces first. Yeah. So I, I, I cannot foot stomp that enough. And I say this all the time on the forum. And unfortunately, I don't feel like very many people listen, uh, which is don't go out and buy those spectra coded uh you know, bits and bits or, or Amana bits as your first bit, because you will break them and it will break your heart <laughs> when you, yeah. I, I started out, um, I actually, I never invested in top end bits until probably within the last year or two. When I got to Infinity, and I really felt mm -hmm. that I could push uh, the, the really push the machine. I all the bits I got was from eBay and from uh, Toolman One uh, is is his little handle on eBay and. I am still cutting with those bits still to this day. Um, That's pretty impressive. I, yeah. 
they're 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 all eighth inch uh shank bits so they're they're not big bits per se uh well except for the quarter inch bits they're quarter inch shank but um mm -hmm. uh they're, they're perfectly fine they're still sharp uh, i bought for 36 dollars. i bought a 10 pack of eighth inch down cut bits or up cut bits uh and i'm like one quarter inch bit from from amana is going to be 36 bucks easy right and yeah. so and and so when I snap one, it's annoying to me now, right? Obviously when I first started, it was a, like, it was a very significant emotional moment, <laughs> right? Um, especially the very first time you do it, you're yeah. like, right? Um, you're, but then you're only emotionally devastated, not financially devastated when you snap like the $50 exactly. bit. I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I was actually watching a video the other day from this guy on YouTube and, um, he had just gotten into the hobby, but he kind of went all in straight up. And, and I, you know, I did that video on all like the, the hidden costs of CNC. Mm -hmm. And I think he's yeah. at the upper end of everything I could possibly imagine. And, and I, I was like, I, I get it. Like sometimes you get what you pay for. Like, I'll be honest with you. The one finity, you get what you pay for straight up. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, again, having a, an old shape Oko when they were still trying to learn how to do CNC or desktop CNC, and then upgrading to the X carve, the X carve was definitely an upgrade, but now like the one finity, you can't shake a stick at it with any of the belt. No, it's solid. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I have video of, of me in inadvertently doing stupid shit. Oh, so I, should, I have video of me doing stupid stuff with the machine and it shows like the entire thing twists and it bounce right back. Yeah. Um, I, I have, uh, I have unsquared my machine. I have broken bits. I have torqued the, uh, on, on the X carve. I'd had to take it apart and put it back together. Um, and this is no fault against X carve or any of those machines. It's just in a different category, a different class. Um, and I, I've, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with Mark and Jen from Infinity too, as well. They're great partners, uh, and they're really great human beings. And, and this is not to rave about the Infinity per se, but um, if you're going to drop two grand or three grand on a CNC, uh, you might think that, hey, what's a thirty-six dollar bit? Well, if you can get the same bit for ten bucks and do some trial and error, in my opinion, right? Uh, I think it's worth uh, doing some trial and error. And uh, uh, I've the most epic failures I've had with my CNC is when I was either uh, complacent about something or legitimately not paying attention. I broke, you mentioned yeah. your dust boot route. I broke my dust boot. I wasn't paying attention. I was jogging it to the far side of the machine. Wasn't paying attention. I brought it forward, not realizing the arms were all the way down and I got caught on that foot and the machine kept going and the dust boot didn't <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, completely destroyed uh, the one side of it. I was able to super glue it together. Um, so it's no big deal in that regard, but, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I think that's great advice for new users and 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 whatnot. So, well, I, you know, hey, it's been really awesome talking to you. It's been really great. Uh, for, for anyone out there in video land who's watching the video, I will link to John's Etsy page uh, down below. I will put it up on the screen as well. We'll do one of these things like that. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in getting your magnetic plates or uh, the really epic dust shoe holder, I'm going to call it. Um, we're just going to put that in the title and, and, and on your Etsy. It works for me. Dust shoe holder. Uh, I'm going to do some branding for you. And um, I did highly recommend it. I appreciate it, John. Thank you so much for doing the video. I think it's been amazing. Yeah, it's been great. I would just want to say thanks again for everything you've done for someone. When I was starting out, it was incredible. Um, and if I can, I'd like to have put a coupon code. I'll send it to you for you guys to put on if anybody wants to use it for your viewers. Excellent. Um, so I will put yeah. a coupon code that John sends me right here on the video screen uh, for anyone who wants to use in the future. And um, so, yeah, definitely go check it out. Uh, Huntington Builds on Etsy. Really amazing. And I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Well, that was the video. I hoped you enjoyed it. It was so much fun connecting with John and sharing his experiences. And even after the interview ended, we continued to talk for about another hour, another hour and a half or so. So it was just so great uh, getting to know him, connecting with him, and just reaching out to other folks in the maker community. So if you like this type of video, please leave your comments down below. Tell us that you like this stuff and I will continue to make videos like this. I really do enjoy discussing things with other makers makers and I find it very informative myself. So I have a tendency to watch those type of videos. So if you're interested in that, please let us know and we will make more videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I'd appreciate that thumbs up anyway, but tell us why so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. If you're not following John on Instagram, I do encourage you to do so as well. He's a wonderful guy and a great maker and 
and a great human being. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.